When you look at, I guess, the conundrum for the ECB and what markets want to know and what economists are looking at, is it more who replaces Mario Draghi or is it simply what happens with Italy next and how the ECB will deal with it? So I think the I think Draghi is a sideshow for next year. They realise uh, those are watching that, it, that ultimately it's a political decision, um, and it's all tied up in who becomes the European uh, president and who uh, becomes the head of the yeah. supervisory thing. It's all uh, musical chairs, and that that'll play out over the next year. Is very interesting. Looking a great profile on the Bloomberg today of him, a marathon runner. Um, who kind of is the centrist candidate, if you like, uh, between the North and the South. You see Weidman slip away in the Bloomberg um, uh, poll of economists, given the, the reports that uh, Angela Merkel won't throw her weight behind him. She's got her eye uh, uh, for Germans on other jobs. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and yes, th then the question of wither Italy and the broader question of, uh, of where the uh, ECB goes from here. Um, it's on a glide path, if you like. Uh, Mario Draghi said he'll stop bomb buying at the end of this mm -hmm. year. We're already seeing suggestions from Italy that he might want to rethink that. Um, be quite a reversal there. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, the question is, at what point um, do they start uh, reversing that balance sheet? What time do, uh, do they start hiking rates? Yeah. Um, and then we're into 2019, and obviously uh, it's a, a long... A week might Nothing. be a long term in politics, but uh, a few months is an eternity in economics. All right, so what will you focus when you, um, you know, direct your thousands of soldiers looking at the economy in Europe, is it more political and, and the impact that could have on the economy or is it the trade war between the US and China's impact on, on Germany and cars or is it, I don't know, French reforms, Brexit, what do you focus on? Next so we're months? seeing signs of a slowdown in Europe. There is probably a trade war effect. Um, everyone always says about the euro area that it trades so much within itself that it should be immune to uh, to these trade wars. But German cars, as you say, is a fine example of, of something that could be caught up. Uh, last week we saw Donald Trump kind of pull back a little on this uh, uh, sense of uh, an agreement with uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, so uh, the euro area not quite out of his um, uh, uh, spotlight. Mm -hmm. um, and then it's slowing uh, just kind of naturally, really. Uh, there's a, a sense there of, uh, of the, the economy did really well last year. That it was never going to maintain that uh, momentum into this year and started to slow. All sets up for Mario Draghi later this month to kind of give an update, a back-to-school update, if you want, of where he stands. Have we really gotten to the bottom of why we understand that Angela Merkel would not want a German at the top of the ECB? Is it because it's actually easier or more important to have someone as commission president? Or is it because she also fears Donald Trump kind of attacking a German you know, president of the ECB because of loose monetary policy? I think it fits into a little bit of all that. I think she feels that the figurehead of the of the European Commission uh, is perhaps a, a more important person, a more political role at this time. It might be, it has been pointed out by others, it might be a good time for Germany to, to skip um, the European uh, Central Bank presidency. Uh, if, you've, if you've got a, uh, the ne if the job of the next president is to ease and, and take um, uh, the euro area out of um, uh, easy money, um, if you put someone like Jens Weidmann in there, who obviously leans against easy money more than, say, Mario Draghi, mm -hmm. um, that could be a jolt to the system. Uh, maybe you want to, to get someone else, another nation, to uh, provide someone who will do that uh, transition and then try and bid for it next time.